What's up, Tall Tannic? It's the quirky narrator here, Bored Badger, here to narrate another video. Hope you liked it. Our world has some pretty neat things to offer, from explainable natural phenomenon to some that seem to have no explanation at all. Here we'll take a look at some pretty crazy stuff that goes down on our planet, some proven, some that still only rely on supposed eyewitness testimony. Here we go, it's time to look at some crazy natural phenomenon. Number 13, Fire Whirls. These bad boys have a bunch of different names, including Fire Devil, Fire Nado, Fire Swirl, Fire Twister, and Fire Tornado. They typically start with a whirl of smoke or wind, which creates a whirlwind that is often made up of ash or flame. The combination of turbulent winds and rising heat can cause whirling eddies of air to form, which can contract into a tornado-like vortex. They consist of a rotating pocket of air and a burning core, which can reach up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The more massive fire whirls are typically spawned from wildfires and can reach 10 to 50 meters, 32 to 164 feet tall, and can last a few minutes. Some have been reported as more than half a mile tall and have lasted longer than 20 minutes. These suckers are intense and cool, mostly cool, and I'd love to see one in my lifetime. Number 12, Auroras. Most know of these lights, referred to as the Northern Lights, Aurora Borealis, Southern Lights, Aurora Australis, or Polar Lights. They are a natural occurring light display in the sky and are mostly seen in higher latitude regions such as the Arctic and the Antarctic. They are produced when solar winds disturb the magnetosphere and send charged particles into the upper atmosphere where their energy becomes lost. The excitation and the ionization of atmospheric constituents then emit varying colored lights. There is a band known as the auroral zone that is generally found between 10 and 20 degrees from either geomagnetic pole at all times where most auroras occur. These lights are pretty cool and are something that everyone should get to experience at least once in their lifetime. So get heading north or south, but don't forget to bring your coat. Number 11, Snow Roller. Whoa, check these out. A snow roller is a giant snowball that forms naturally when chunks or pieces of snow are being blown along the ground and pick up more and more snow along the way, as you can see in these pictures. It's just like how we gather big balls to use for snowmen, but they're made by nature. They've been seen smaller than a tennis ball and larger than a car. Typically, snow rollers form more cylindrically than the circular ball's weed roll, and often they're found hollow considering the inner layers are usually pretty weak and can easily get blown away. This leaves a formation that looks a lot like a snow Swiss roll or a snow donut as you can see in this picture. Most of these cool formations are found in hilly areas considering gravity is typically needed for nature to accomplish these amazing fates. Cool. Number 10, Supercell. Supercells are scary and are typically characterized as having a deep rotating updraft called a mesocyclone. Supercells, like the ones in these photos, are the least common of the four kinds of thunderstorms, but they definitely have the potential for being some of the worst. One crazy thing about these powerful storms is that they're generally separated from other thunderstorms, but they can control weather up to 20 miles away. They're pretty much just stronger storms that are more tornado enabled than a typical storm cell, and they can create their own tornadoes. These things are pretty scary, and if you ever see one, I'd advise you to take shelter. Because if you get caught up in one of these, well, you're not gonna be in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Number nine, bioluminescence. This super cool natural phenomenon occurs when light is produced and emitted by a living organism. It occurs in all sorts of different vertebrates and invertebrates alike, in some fungi, bioluminescent bacteria, and terrestrial invertebrates like everyone's bioluminescent favorite, the firefly. A chemical reaction between an enzyme and a light emitting molecule causes the bioluminescence, but I'm no scientist so I'm not going to delve in much further than that. The reasons for the awesome glow vary, but include luring prey, attracting mates, mimicry of other types of animals, or counter-illumination camouflage. Researchers are now studying bioluminescence for possible uses for lots of things, including for street lighting or decorative purposes. Natural born ravers I say, who go into EDC? Number 8. Fall Streak Hole This is also commonly called a punch hole cloud, cloud canal, cloud hole, hole punch cloud, or my favorite, sky punch! A sky punch is a large gap or hole that is typically elliptical or circular and appears in altocumulus or cirrocumulus clouds. They are formed in water when the clouds has not yet frozen because of lack of ice nucleation, but the water temperature is below freezing. Once the ice crystals do end up forming, water droplets around the crystals will evaporate, which leaves the hole in the cloud. 
since they're so rare to happen, they've quite often been confused for or mistaken for UFOs. And it's not all that surprising. I mean, look at them. That's crazy. Number seven, light pillars. Here's a cool optical phenomenon that occurs when light is reflected off tiny little ice crystals that are suspended in clouds or the atmosphere. A vertical band of light forms what seems to extend below and above a light source and makes for a kind of creepy looking sight. They almost look like an alien beam shooting down from the sky to abduct some poor unknowing soul. These belong in a family of halos, which I will talk about later. Number 6. Morning Glory Clouds This is a rare meteorological phenomenon that has been observed in various locations all over the world. Their form of Arcus Cloud, or Roll Cloud, and they can stretch to be up to 620 miles long. At times, there is only one cloud in the sky at once, but up to 10 consecutive roll clouds have been reported. The cloud is continuously formed at the front edge and eroded at the trailing edge, and there is a constant steady vertical motion at the front edge and a turbulent sinking at the back. Thus, why they appear to roll. They are thought to be most likely when the humidity in an area is high, because that provides the clouds with enough moisture to form, as well as when strong winds blew the previous day. They typically appear over water and break up quickly over land due to the air over land being drier. Number 5. Water Spouts These are kind of like the fire whirls, only the complete opposite, you know? These neat funnels appear over water and are intense columnar vortexes that can be connected to one of three types of cloud. Cumuliform, 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 cumulus congestus, or cumulonimbus. They're known as a non-supercell tornado over water and are usually weaker than tornadoes over land. However, there are stronger versions that are spawned by mesocyclones. They're mostly found in subtropical and tropical areas, but they've been reported in places like New Zealand, Australia, the Great Lakes, Antarctica, Europe, and even the Great Salt Lake. They've been known to be able to suck small animals like fish, frogs, and turtles up out of the water and into the cloud, then transport them over land and rain them down upon an unsuspecting population. Water spots are crazy, but I'd love to see one in my lifetime. Number 4. Mamatis Clouds Do you want to know what the name of this cloud means? It means mammary cloud, like the mammary you're thinking, Latin for breast or udder. Boobies. Because that's what they look like. They're a bunch of pouch looking clouds that hang beneath the base of a cloud and can be attached to all sorts of parent clouds, but are typically seen riding along on cumulonimbus. They form from pockets of cold air that sinks down to contrary warm puffs of clouds rising through the convection of warm air. They're typically associated with severe thunderstorms, so if you see them, take shelter! They often indicate that an unusually strong storm is coming, in some cases tornadic, and should be read as a warning. They're quite beautiful though, so I can see why you'd want to stay outside to take pictures. But just remember that I warned you, and you better not come crying to me when you get sucked up by a tornado! Number 3. Halos This crazy cool optical phenomenon occurs when ice crystals in the atmosphere and light interact with each other in just the right way. The halos can either be white or colored, and most of them occur around the sun, moon, or other light sources. There are lots of different kinds of halos, but some of the more famous include sun dogs, light pillars, and circular halos. Cirrus or cirrostratus clouds way up in the upper troposphere are typically the clouds that hold the ice crystals that are responsible for these spectacular formations. The orientation and shape of the crystals are what determine which type of halo will be observed. The crystals work much like mirrors and prisms, and when light enters it, it is refracted and reflected, bounced around and sent out in particular directions. Some pretty neat stuff. Number 2. Earthquake Lights This is a luminous aerial phenomenon that's typically reported in the sky over areas of volcanic eruptions, seismic activity, or tectonic stress, as you can see in these pictures. Some reports state that the lights are seen before or after earthquakes, as well as during, but they're mostly reported as showing up while the quake is happening. They can have a broad color spectrum, but are usually reported as having a bluish or white hue and are shaped similar to auroras. They're typically reported when the quakes have a magnitude of 5 or higher on the Richter scale, and they've been spotted hundreds and hundreds of miles from the epicenter. Scientists aren't precisely confident on what causes the lights, and many are skeptical that they even happen at all as there have been no confirmed observation of said lights. Some believe that lights or lightning near volcanoes could be related to dirty thunderstorms. Either way, the idea of strange lights showing up near eruptions or quake activity is pretty cool, almost like something out of a sci-fi movie. And I'll just let you decide for yourself. Number 1. Ball Lightning Oh, this is beautiful. 
So, ball lightning refers to spherical, luminous objects, kind of like what you see in this picture, that have been reported to vary in size from being several meters in diameter all the way down to tiny pea-sized balls. They're an unexplained electrical phenomenon that is said to last much longer than your average lightning bolt, and early reports claim that the balls explode at some point and leave behind a sulfurous odor. Although ball lightning, or something similar, can be reproduced in a lab, scientists have been skeptical about it occurring naturally because they're not sure how it would happen. It's pretty hard to study and collect data on, considering it's so unpredictable and doesn't happen very often. Whether it's real or not, I don't know, but if it is, I'd love to see something like what's in this picture, from a distance and maybe behind a wall or safety glass or something. Well, video's over already? That was pretty fast. If you wanna see more videos just like this one, stop on by Board Badger on the way out. I'll keep you entertained. See you there.